let's bring out the cast and the creators of the hit show, Hintifies. Let's start with the writers, directors, creators. They do it all. This show is on the air because of these people. And we're gonna bring out the first one who is Marvin Lemus. <laughs> Give it up! Yes! Then we got Linda Yvette Chavez. Now we're gonna bring on the cast. We got Carrie Martin Lashney. Give it up. All right. Hey, Carrie. Now we're gonna bring out, give it up for JJ Soria. <laughs> what up, everybody? Yes. His head's gonna get too big. Don't do that. <laughs> Come on out, Annie Gonzalez. Woo! Yes, Annie, Annie. Ooh, it's a competition now. It's a competition now. Whose fans go harder? And then, last but not least, Julissa Calderon. by the fabulous Mariana Da Silva, founder of El Cina. Give it up for Mariana. Yeah. Thank you. Hello, hello, everybody. Thank you for being here. Look at this beautiful panel right here. Make some noise for them. Yeah. Yeah. So when El Cine was asked to program and curate some panels for LA Comic Con, I thought I have to have Hentified here, right? What's more LA than Hentified? It's true. Nothing more. I always say LA Comic Con is a creator con, and Hentified is a grassroots show that really you guys dreamt up and brought it all the way to what it's become today. So my first question is for the creators, Linda and Marvin. Tell us about the beginning of the show, how it started, and also about writing with Boyle Heights as your muse. Yeah, the, the show started as a digital series um, that Macro produced and financed. And it was like six years ago, Lynn and I wrote it, we shot it, and, and America was involved. And um, we were just hoping to make a good web series, something that would be like fun and that looked like a show that we wish had existed when we were growing up. And, um, and then we dropped a trailer before we ever released it and it just turned into a TV conversation very quickly. We premiered it at Sundance and then we went out to the town and sold it and Netflix is where we ended up. Is that boring? It's a little boring, but it's okay. No, it's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> we did a lot of, tra we, when we did the digital series, we did a lot of trauma bonding and putting all of our family's issues and craziness on the table, put it together and really built something that we're both so proud of. Yeah, and the show feels so authentic to LA, but it also transcends LA, and it talks about our community, and it, I think that's relatable anywhere that you may live that has a Latinx community, but also that deals with family and perseverance, and that's the human experience. But JJ and Annie, you're both from LA, right? Born and raised. Yeah. East LA, baby, gang, gang. Born in Ball Heights, <laughs> raised in Estadeno. Yeah, so tell us about how you felt when you read the script, how this show was particularly authentic to your East LA Angelino experience. Ladies first, go ahead. Age before <laughs> beauty. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, I, I think immediately when I got the sides and I got the script, I had never seen myself represented on a page. I mean, I feel like as the actor's job, right, we're supposed to see what is written there and then give our own interpretation. This was the first time that it wasn't difficult for me to memorize the words. It just flowed out like water. And I think what the creators did really trauma bonding and doing the work and holding each other's hands and looking at each other's wounds and then pouring it out on paper for all of us to see, feel, and relate to 
I was like, I just remember being like, look, even if I don't get it, I am so proud of y'all. I hope whoever does this show goes to the heights that it is. And even while we were back there, I was like, you guys created a show that now we are at Comic-Con representing. Like, this is so powerful. Thank you guys, and thank Marvin and Linda. Yeah. Aww, and yeah. you should answer all the questions. <laughs> I'll just piggyback off that and basically say, yeah, when I read it, I, and I've told Marvin and Linda this, that it was like, you guys looked into the window of our family's gatherings and saw us just interacting. The interaction between myself, Carrie, and Carlos, the cousins, uh, the banter between us talking shit. That was like looking through my own family's window. I was like, I was looking at myself with my cousins. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> How many of y'all felt the same way? Yeah, <laughs> yeah so y'all relate. Um, so I, it was, when, when I first read it, I was like, man, this is the first time I've really seen my, my upbringing on the page. So uh, thank you, Marvin and Linda. I think watching that, we feel it too. So it's really impactful and it's really important. And Julissa, you've always spoken about um, just being yourself, which I've always admired and girl crushed over for a long time. <laughs> Thank you. You've stayed away from getting put in a box and the box that our community gets to, is often fighting against. And I, I, I really believe that our superpower is our authenticity, right? When we own who we are and we bring that forth. Can you talk a little bit about how you stayed away from falling into the trap of what Hollywood wants to paint us? Ooh, um, honestly, I don't know that I think of, first of all, thank you. <laughs> um, I, I think I've always been this person, right? I've grown up, where I grew up, I didn't grow, I didn't grow up in LA, but where I grew up in Miami is very similar to a Boyle Heights where it's like, it's you, you are who you are, your family, your cousins, uh, the hood, um, only wants you to be yourself. And so I grew up in that and my family kind of always supported exactly who each and every child, each and every cousin, each and every person was in the family. And I think they gave me that strength to like keep doing, keep being exactly who I was. And so when I came to LA, I didn't want to shy away from that. That's just something that was instilled in me and I'm still doing it. And I think that in Hollywood it's just, I found that it's very easy to go, go with the grain. And, and, and not even, and kind of like subconsciously not even think about it, but you're, you're kind of just, you want it in so bad that you kind of do, you kind of mold to a lot of things, but I don't mold and I don't fold. Okay. So uh, that's just who I've always been. That's how I grew up. And I feel like it's been working for me. And I only hope that me doing that only inspires other people to stand in their truth and be exactly who you are because we're one of one. Yes. I love that. And Carrie, you talked about how Anna uh, has continued to make you stand in your power. Mm. And now you're stepping into a power position of an executive producer of the hey, adaptation now. of The Boy. On. We're really excited about that. Can you talk about uh, why you decided to start going into production and producing your own stories? Well, to be quite honest, I don't know if y'all know my background, but I come from the casting background and I think having seen the world from the other side, I really felt like the first day I got into the casting office, the first thing I thought was, cool, I'm never gonna get cast. But it was truly a change in perspective when I realized that it wasn't about what you know, like the idea of what the creators were coming up with, it was I had to bring exactly what Julissa said, you, and not change you for somebody else. However, that you, like Annie was saying, is it, it, wasn't, it wasn't portrayed correctly until, for me, Marvin and Linda created Hentified. And I was like, I want to create stories like this. I want to change the mold of what's being said and the stories being told. And the idea behind um, producing, I was, I was like, why not? America does it, Eva does it. I was like, I can do it too. Yeah. So I stopped saying that, you know, somebody has to give me permission to do it. And I'm really taking action like these other women before me have and just not asking for permission now. Amen. That's how El Cine, the nonprofit that 
put this together today started, it was just how do we stop asking for permission? And I think if you guys are listening into this and you're a creator yourself, it leads us to our next question, right? In our culture, we are taught to often stay away from tough topics and not talk about immigration and kind of stay away from things that can be uncomfortable. And I wanted to ask Marvin and Linda, how do you lean into these tough topics and what advice would you give to somebody who may be afraid to write their story or own their story because of repercussions they may receive after? Wow, that's, a good, that's a good question. I think I always joke with people that Marvin and I are kind of cocky motherfuckers when we walk into rooms. <laughs> and I think a big part of that is we have gone so long or had gone so long not seeing our work really greenlit or are valued in the way that it deserves to be valued. And so when you are coming from that space, you start to walk into rooms saying like, this is who I am, like it or not, do you want it? No? Okay, the next person's gonna take it. Mm -hmm. And we walked into those rooms when we were pitching Henthified, like saying this is a bilingual show, this is a bi bicultural show, this is a show by us for us, and if you don't like that, you need to go. Luckily, it worked out for us, <laughs> and we got six to seven offers for the show, but I think that that's why. We walked in very authentically ourselves. We said, this is who we are, and this is the world that we love, and the people that we love with all our hearts, and if you all can't love them like we do, then you're not gonna be involved with this. Mm -hmm. And luckily, you know, Netflix did. They loved it like we did, and, and I think we gotta keep building that. I love hearing all of the folks here on this panel are trying to produce and build, and that's the biggest obstacle, that's the biggest challenge we're facing right now. There's not enough creators telling the diversity of stories that we have. Like Marvin and I, Clo Gloria, Tanya, we can't tell all the stories. In fact, we only have our stories. We, yep. we don't represent everybody. So it's a beautiful thing to see others creating and building and have faith in that story that you have within because there's a bunch of people here who probably relate to what you're feeling. Are you a geeky Latino like I am? <laughs> then where's that story? I wanna see that story, go tell it. Yeah. 67 offers. <laughs> You know, I, I, I definitely wasn't always there. Like I didn't, it, you know, it, it took a, a, a while for me, the journey to getting to having that confidence, uh, being able to tell the story and own it. Cause I definitely remember being afraid of telling this story of, of exploring my identity, of trying to figure out like, am I Mexican enough to even write this? And the way that I got there was digital. Like, Lynn and I both come from digital, where we were creating, like, you know, in the early days of YouTube and the early days of Instagram, creating content, working with brands, and, like, being able to work there in a, where, where finally, for, like, the first time maybe ever, aside from indie film, they're like, there were no gatekeepers, and we got to just create stuff, and we were telling stories and experimenting, and, like, being able to put it out and see, like, there is an audience out there, and they, we are reaching somebody, and people want to see these stories, like, it gives you that confidence. You eventually, like, uh, you know, we would make something sketch after sketch or short after short, and realizing, like, yo, there's an audience there, and it gives you that confidence as a filmmaker that you need to be able to walk in and be like, this is the story that I got to tell. Like, like Linda's saying, this is the story I have to tell. This is, I'm the only filmmaker that can tell this story. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, being able to own it that way because that's the, the thing that makes you unique. And I think in terms of, you know, you brought up immigration and the, the vulnerable topics, the things that are scary to talk about, those are the things we have to lean into as a storyteller because everybody here is making stuff and there's so much noise there's millions of hours of content uploaded every single day and the only way to cut through all that noise is by saying something that is so incredibly personal and vulnerable to you that it's like my mantra is like if you're not telling me your secrets as a storyteller then why would I listen like why is anyone gonna listen um, and so I've, that's a mantra that I really try to stick to because it it's the way that like, you know, when you're in a coffee shop and like somebody next to you, they're starting to have like, there's hot gossip going out the table next door and you mute your iPhone, your, your headphones, <laughs> so you can listen in. It's just like, well, I don't know, I just wanna hear what cheese they got over here. And, and it's that same thing. We all inherently wanna know, we wanna connect. And like we connect at those places that the things that we think we can't talk about. That's awesome. That's the point of view I, I love that. 
Yeah, I completely agree. If you ever want anybody to remember anything, you tell it to them like you're telling them a cheesemate, and yeah. they're like, yes, that will be stuck forever. Yeah, no, we love it. I mean, I don't know. We this is we don't like to work. We just do a lot of cheesemate, and then it ends up becoming stories. <laughs> is how we work, to be honest. So we are going to wrap up soon, but I wanted just to go down the line and say with everything that is being talked about in the movement and the doors that we are hopefully opening by having these conversations, by f bringing these topics to light, what movies do you want to see made with Latinx in the front and behind the camera? Who Where wants to, if you don't have one, that's okay. I could you start over here. <laughs> okay. Um, <laughs> I just want to see our faces everywhere without the content being prefaced as Latinx. Yeah. Like, this is a Latinx yeah. film. Like, like, okay, for instance, right, the movie The Pest. Yes. Right? John Leguizamo wasn't like, yeah, he just so happened to be Latino, but he was just wiling up in there. Like, he was a scam artist. He was doing accents. He had, he was, do, he was friends with, you know, the Scottish mafia and with the, with the pastor. Like, I want to see things like that where we get to be outrageous and funny and nuanced and, and, the, and ourselves without the stamp of it because we are. I mean, America, it's, we're a melting pot. We don't need to have that anymore. We're here, we ain't going nowhere. Let's keep on pushing. Yes. Ditto. <laughs> <laughs> That was an answer. Look at she. It's okay. That's, that's, I'm his baby mama. I don't, I, don't, listen, I don't gotta talk more than I have. Than I want to. She got it. Next. I'm his baby Aww. mama. It's okay. I speak for the both of us, on screen and off screen. Don't worry, guys. I got gotcha. you. Um, okay, I'm gonna get real specific here because I'm manifesting this in my life. Yes. Manifest that shit. Um, all right. So I'm a hopeless. I, I'm gonna say huge hopeless romantic. And you speaking on saying about like it not having to be Latinx. It's just because I was made for the role. Okay. All right, so <laughs> Nicholas Sparks might hear me somewhere someday, but there is a book with a Latina lead and her name is Carrie Martin Lashney. <gasps> hey! Yes, there is. <laughs> gonna, so and if you want to read the book, it's called See Me. It's so good. Latinas, yes, empowered. Yes. Um, I want to see, uh, I want to see the, the Chicano super bad. That's yes. what I want. I want to see stuff like that. I want to see, um, also, uh, um, uh, Goonies. A oh. Goonies! The Goonies with a bunch of little brown and black kids. That would be great. <laughs> yes. Oh, I, I just want us to be winning Oscars. Yeah. I want us to be, like, I want us to elevate and to be, like, have that prestige, like, award-winning film content, because I feel like often people think our talent does not have the talent, but if you see the people on this panel right here, these actors are incredibly talented and are capable of the work bringing for home itself. Oscars. Sorry? Yes. <laughs> I didn't hear you, JJ. <laughs> so, uh, capable of bringing home Oscars. So I think that that's the, those are the films I want to see us making, and, and those are the budgets I want us to be getting. Okay. I'm over here trying to take a picture of myself at the same time. <laughs> wow. Um, honestly, I want to see some superhero shit. Hey! Like, I want to be in Comic Con. Like, we need to be dressed the fuck up, head down. I'm a super fucking woman, this Dominican ass girl. Yes. I want to see us doing that. We haven't seen that. And to, to what Annie said, to piggyback off of that, it does not need to be that it's Latinx yeah. superheroes, right? We already that. We just want to see ourselves in that as well. Yes. Yeah. Amazing. I think, I really believe that change happens when we put ourselves in positions of power and then we open doors for people who are also working hard to get in there. And Hentified is a show about the human experience, about perseverance, about family, about community, and I think everyone can get down with that. So please watch both seasons of yeah. Hentified streaming right now on Woo! Netflix. Please watch. Thank you guys. Thank, thank you. Guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, thank thank you all. You. This is John Glover, and you are watching Fandom Spotlight. Be sure to like, share, and subscribe. Lionel Luther recommends it. Ah, have some fun. Follow your fandom. <laughs>